welcome to the Simple Sophisticate Podcast, where intelligent living is paired with signature style. I'm your host, Shannon Abels. And whether you're listening on your commute, exercising, working in the garden, or sitting down with a hot cup of tea or a cafe au lait, thank you for tuning in. Let's get started. Welcome to the 103rd episode of The Simple Sophisticate. Today we are going to be talking about style, effortless style that is, and the truth about it. But before I get into today's episode about effortless style, let me talk a little bit about a delicious petit plaisir you're going to want to hang around for at the end of today's episode. A few weeks ago on my Instagram feed, I shared a pic of a recipe that I was just blown away by for not only its taste, but also its simplicity. And today I'm going to break it down and share with you where I got the recipe from, the tweaks I made to it, so that in a matter of minutes, in less than a half hour, you will have this beauty in the oven and you'll be waiting impatiently for it to come out of the oven. So be sure to stay tuned for this recipe at the end of today's episode. But we need to get into talking about style. Effortless style is something that seems as if it is a bit of an oxymoron. And today I'm going to talk about the five ways that we can acquire effortless style. So we're going to talk about the truth. I want to begin with a very simple quote that has never really been attributed to anybody. So if anybody knows who has said this, I scoured the internet and all sorts of style sites. I could not figure out who said this, but it's stating something that ties in with today's topic And I think it's a great way to set the tone for today's episode. It goes, fashion is what you buy. Style is what you do with it. Over the past weekend, I took on the task of doing a major edit of my closet. The tossing was easy and what to keep much easier than I had expected. But even after all these years of curating a capsule wardrobe that I talk about a lot, I still saw gaps. Gaps where my lifestyle didn't align with my wardrobe offerings. What this realization told me was, number one, I am ever evolving as an individual. Woohoo! <laughs> That's a good thing, right? So I'm not going to poo-poo that. That's a great, great thing. And two, with each passing year, I become more and more aware of what my true style is. Initially, frustration may set in because we want to look effortlessly style right now when we start to begin knowing what we want and knowing where to go to get it. And, 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 and even when we want it now, even when we seem to know what we want, it's not going to happen that quickly. However, it can happen. And even though it does take time and I'll dive deeper into why it takes time and I'll get into that to number one, knowing that it can happen is what I hope will fuel you to keep going to establish it. Because new fashions are available on the rack every single season, purchasing these items is easy. It's what we do with it, as the quote I started today's episode states, that is hard. That, that knowledge takes time because no matter what works for somebody else, you still have to figure out how it works for you. And the taking time part involves just as much about knowing what works together, different colors, different prints, different cuts, different fabrics, as taking the time to get to know yourself, what we need and what we feel our best in. Therefore, effortless style, while not a total and complete myth, is something that does require effort leading up to the desired result. So let's take a look at five truths of effortless style today. Number one, in an interview with Elle magazine back in 2014, former Chanel model, Inez de la Frassange shared something that should bring a great relief to us all. She said, I just woke up like this is a lie. When I read this interview, I did relax a bit more. (laughs) But the reality is knowing what works well together, knowing what works well for you and knowing where to find it takes conscious effort, patience and time as we evolve into our most authentic selves. As I mentioned in this spring season's The Simply Luxurious Life Shopping Guide, listening to the third episode of Grand Stories podcast, Pardon My French, in which two Parisians, 
one a high fashion designer and another a high fashion model. They admitted freely that acquiring effortless style took years, many, many years, as they became more acquainted with who they were. However, on the flip side, it is important to know we must make a conscientious choice to notice what works, be willing to try something new, invest in quality clothing as well as tailoring, and ask questions of those who know how to do it well, how they mastered the skill. I have a post that I wrote a handful of years ago that will help you discover the necessary homework that maybe you can dive into if you're curious about finding who you are with regards to your signature style and therefore your effortless style will then come from that. And it really breaks it down. Again, it doesn't really start with clothing. It starts with something far much deeper in in ourselves with who we are. So number one is that it truly does take time to acquire that effortless style that we seek. Number two is it does get easier. That's the good news. It definitely gets easier. The good news is as with most endeavors we invest time into, it does become easier. Over time, you refrain from buying items that will never complement your skin tone or your body shape. And over time, you also discover which outfits make you feel the best and garner sincere compliments on a regular basis. And so it is over time that your style becomes more and more effortless. Number three is that in order to remain effortlessly chic, not only to get there, but to remain there, is that it requires regular editing. As we are ever evolving creatures, continually learning as we follow our curiosities and progressing as individuals, our wardrobes must evolve as well. It doesn't necessarily mean that you toss and get something new entirely all the time, But wear and tear does occur. Colors do fade and subtle updates and improved quality can be added to improve your wardrobe with simple changes. Not only because your life is changing, but because you're learning more about yourself, but you're also learning more about the world of style and fashion. And as you learn more, that's when you're going to start to make those little edits. Little edits make a powerful statement in time and gradually become more and more comfortable with what you're choosing. With each edit that I do, which is approximately twice a year, this is the good news, at least I think it's good news, fewer and fewer items are removed, which is a good sign because perhaps I am learning and perhaps I am not purchasing unnecessary and unwearable clothing. When we edit, we also are reminded what needs repaired, what can work well with other items, and how far we've come. So not only is it a tutorial exercise, it's an exercise of... I don't know, celebration, uh, reminder of you're doing all right. You're, you are progressing. You are moving forward, not only in your wardrobe choices, but in your life. So number three is that it requires regular editing. Number four, it all begins with a healthy physique. Aside from the clothes we wear, they will always look their best if they are sized to fit our unique physique. And so long as we tend to our health, eat well, and get our blood pumping on a regular basis, our wardrobe sizing shouldn't vary too much, which means the clothes we love and invest in can be worn for years. Earlier in this podcast, I believe it was episode 69, I shared 15 habits for timeless style that go further into all the details of both clothing choices and style and lifestyle decisions that lead up to having a timeless style with whatever options you choose to put together. I will provide a link to that on today's show notes. That's episode 69 of the podcast. So number four is that it begins with a healthy physique. Take care of you, tend to you. Not only will it help the clothes look better, but you will feel more confident wearing those clothes because you will feel healthy, you'll feel vibrant and full of energy. Number five, don't forget to invest in footwear. Similar to the person and their personality who wears the clothes, which is paramount, the shoes we choose to wear will either weigh the look down or take it to new heights. Investing in shoes is a worthwhile decision. Find a local cobbler in town to spruce up your shoes when they need a bit of maintenance and you will be happy that you spent the extra cash on your investment shoes. So number five is don't forget to invest in footwear. They really do finish any outfit you choose to put together. So the big question remains, is style ever truly effortless if we're always having to edit and tend to it? 
effort in the terms of attaining effortless style is to strain, is to look forced. And so in this case, yes, effortless is possible when it comes to style. The closer you get to knowing yourself, knowing what you shine in and knowing what works with your lifestyle, the decisions become that much easier. Simply keep your eyes open, update your items before they need to be swapped out, and don't be afraid to wear the same thing a couple of times throughout the week because if it works, it works. When we can view what we wear as a pleasure, the clothes we wear become an extension of ourselves and help to enliven our confidence, mood, and carefree, worrisome attitudes so we can be fully present in the moment. Too many times in my past, I have been tugging constantly or pulling frequently during an outing, so much so that I couldn't fully enjoy where or with whom I was with. Clothes shouldn't be the barrier, but rather a minor detail that with time and patience enable you to revel in your amazing life. So yes, the good news is effortless style is possible. Just be patient, continue to edit, and it will definitely get easier and more honest reflection of who you are and the life you enjoy living. Be sure to check out the show notes because I do offer more in-depth posts and podcasts on how to really dive into creating your effortless style um, or timeless style as one of the episodes is titled. I'll provide those in the show notes today, which is located at the simplyluxuriouslife.com backslash podcast 103. So be sure to check that out. Stay tuned now because we're shifting from style to food to delicious food. I'll see you in just a moment with this week's Petit Plaisir. All right, welcome back. This week's Petit Plaisir is a rustic apple tart for two. For two, I should say. Uh, Anyway, so... As I said at the top of today's episode, a couple weeks ago, I shared an image of an apple tart. Now, if you've seen the picture or if you are going to be going to online, uh, my online show notes, you're going to find that this is an image. It's definitely rustic because it is done so simply, but I'm telling you, the taste is absolutely magnificent. Now, I have two other recipes for apple tart, one that's more formal and has many more servings as well as a more Americanized tart that's like a mini pie. So I call it tartlets because they're a little bit fuller and thicker and they have this fantastic topping. Um, so it's more of more ingredients, a little more sugar. Um, so you have two different options. But this option, today's rustic apple tart, is all about that weeknight dessert or even that weekend dinner party where it's something simple for you to make. And initially people see it and they're like, oh, that's basic, that's simple. And then they bite into it and they're just, you're going to knock their socks off. But this one's a rustic tart for two. Mm -hmm. Now you could serve it for four people, small four pieces. That's absolutely fine. But it's a perfect size for two moderate quantities and um, you will definitely impress. Let's just say that. All right. Let me talk to you about this this recipe because it is very simple. If you're in the kitchen listening to this, I can kind of talk you through it. The key is you want to get the crust made at least 30 minutes ahead of time or the day before or the morning of and stick it in the fridge. Now, I have taken this recipe. um, It was inspired by Susan Herman Loomis's book in a French kitchen, and I've tweaked it a little bit, especially the crust. This is my crust. This is how I make pastry crust for my tarts. Um, And well, I'm just a fan of a little bit of sugar in my pastry crust. Not a lot. A little bit. But the key is really good butter and chilling. You really have to chill the, the, the dough and you really have to get good butter. So, And the butter needs to be chilled too when you use it. So let's start talking about this. So the pastry, preferably get your food processor out. If not, you can also get a pastry cutter in a bowl and just go at it or a fork. Um, you just need a half a cup of all-purpose flour, one-fourth cup unsalted butter. Just chop it up into squares so it's easier to get into that flour in the food processor one tablespoon of sugar, a half a teaspoon of salt. You're going to pulse that together until it looks like it's in fine little crumbs. And then you're going to add one tablespoon of cold water. Now, when you do this, do it gradually because depending on where you live and how much humidity is in the air, you may need the full tablespoon. I've never needed more than a full tablespoon and I live in a very dry area. But you may not need the full tablespoon if you live in a very humid area. So watch it. You don't want it to become gumpy and come together. You just want it to be finely sticking together. That will be the best consistency. 
bin. That's easy. You're done with the crust. You're going to put that onto a plastic saran wrap sheet, wrap it up into a ball, stick it in the fridge. Again, a minimum of 30 minutes in the fridge. That'll absolutely work, though you don't have to do it any longer. But if you do it at the beginning of the day, it'll be that much easier for you to go into the kitchen when that pastry has already been in the fridge for that amount of time or a whole half a day or whatnot. And you'll have this dessert in the oven in 15 minutes. It's that simple. It's so easy. It's so easy. So let's get to the topping. You're going to want to preheat your oven to 450 degrees Fahrenheit or 230 degrees Celsius. You're going to want to peel and core and cut into uh, narrow slices the apple and the apple Choose about a medium to large apple with a lot of flavor. That's the key, a lot of flavor. And everyone's going to have different options for that. Set the apples aside for a moment. Now take the pastry out of the refrigerator and using a little bit of flour for dusting the board or your pastry cloth, dust it with flour and also dust it with a little bit of sugar. Yep. Roll the dough out to about one eighth inch thickness. And you're going to see in my image, it's a very rough rollout. It's a little bit rectangular, but it can be a square. Don't worry about the edges. Make it look rustic. And you don't have to make it look rustic. It will be. You're not going to spend a lot of time and energy and angst on making the crust look perfect. It's delicious. It just needs to be eaten and enjoyed. Let it just be itself. (laughs) All right. Then you're going to lay out the apples onto the dough after you've put the dough on parchment paper on a baking sheet. All right. Lay the apples out and they're slightly going to layer on top of each other. Sprinkle a tablespoon of brown sugar on top of the apples and just simply place it in the oven for 20 to 30 minutes. You do not want to take it out until the crust is golden brown or as brown as you want. You may want it a little bit darker. It's up to you and what you like, but mine usually takes about 20 to 25 minutes, but different ovens, different temps. Again, if your temperature is right on 450, you should be able to go 25 and be spot on. As soon as you take it out of the oven, drizzle one to two tablespoons of honey over the apples to add an extra touch of sweetness. And it does add a little bit of glisten, but it's really all about the flavor. As I said, you'll have about four slices for small serving sizes or two moderate sizes. I top it with gelato and you'll see in my image, I'm using Talenti. I'm not sure how to say that. My Italian speakers, my apologies. Italian Talenti vanilla bean gelato and enjoy with a hot cup of tea or a hot cup of coffee. It is going to just melt in your mouth. That crust, the flavor of the apples, a touch of that sweetness. Mm, So simple. So simple. I'll provide a link to today's recipe. It is on its own post, but it is on today's show notes, the simplyluxuriouslife.com backslash podcast 103. And it'll have all the details and break it all down for you. And I hope you've enjoyed this week's Petit Plaisir, where each week ideas are shared to make the everyday all the more enjoyable. Tune in at the end of each Monday's podcast, where I'll recommend a book, a film, or a recipe anything that is a simple pleasure to satiate your sophisticated taste. Thanks for tuning in, everyone. I'll see you next week. Thank you for tuning in to the Simple Sophisticated Podcast, where intelligent living is paired with signature style. For more ideas and inspiration throughout the week, stop by the blog, the simplyluxuriouslife.com, or pick up the book, Choosing the Simply Luxurious Life, A Modern Woman's Guide. To stay caught up on the most recent podcast, blog post, and receive exclusive news, as well as an extra dose of inspiration each week, subscribe to the Simply Luxurious Life's newsletter which arrives in your inbox each Friday to enjoy with a hot cup of tea or your morning coffee just in time to jumpstart the weekend. Until next Monday, I'm your host, Shannon Abels. Bonjour.